Um, everyone in Europe knows this news, I'm sure. Maybe some of you in America know it as well. Um, a couple of weeks back, researchers found out um, in, in a study that 75% of all insects in Germany, the Netherlands, and probably in Europe, have disappeared over 30 years which and in during the summer even 80 percent and we've all been very worried about tigers and elephants and um uh polar bears and well you know beautiful animals rhinos and we should be worried about them we should save them absolutely but many people are fighting to keep them what i find an enormously scary thought is that the bottom of the food chain, the base of the food chain, is disappearing, the insects. And um, that is a really, truly terrifying idea. Because insects make our soil airy enough to be, for trees to be able to shoot their roots through it. <laughs> they clean up after our asses. Um, they make sure that our apples, that our apple blossom actually grows into apples. And there is many, many more things that insects do for us. And we hate them. They're bugs. And if you Google insects, if you Google bees, wasps, bumblebees, butterflies, moths, try, do that, or ants, whatever. Google an insect. Now, pause my video, Google an insect. Please do. And you will see that the first so many Google finds are detergents, ways to kill them. And I believe that should stop. Um, yeah, insects can be, I mean, I will still kill mosquitoes. I am um, rather allergic to their bites. Um, they will give me well, swellings, you know, if I get one sting, one bite here, I get about four or five swellings on this arm and my arm becomes really, really big. One time I even had, a, what's it called, blood poisoning? Because of it, because my arm was so big that the pressure became so big in my arm that um, the, there was a problem in my veins with blood no longer going through it very well. So for me, you know, they are what I will kill but all the rest I don't kill. Um, we had a problem here with box tree moths, the caterpillars. Um, the Netherlands Dutch people are a huge fan of box trees and they are really nice. But a couple of years ago, the box tree moth was um, came into Europe through um, Japan, China, Japan, I believe. And it doesn't have a predator here. So what happened is that it has exploded and it has become a plague. So what have people started to do? They have started poisoning the caterpillars, but these caterpillars, they have four cyclists, four cycli a year. So we have four rounds of butterfly, cater, butterfly larvae, cater, butterfly caterpillar uh, cocoon. That's four cycli in a year. That means you have to poison the box trees almost all year round. What happened? is that now, this is the season of the young birds, we have way less young birds. And why? They were all poisoned. And not just the birds were poisoned, not just the young, but also the mothers and the fathers. So, birds are already struggling. There are too few insects. And now this has happened. And not just that, there are many more things. You know, all this poison, it just sinks when it rains from the trees into the soil below it and there it just simply poisons everything that lives underneath the trees. And we human beings, I believe, have to get real and finally realize that we are a part of nature. We have borrowed a little piece of nature to make into our home, our gardens, our lives but we must respect it. And um, everyone in the whole world wants to fight for whales, for elephants, for the giants, you know? 
they're beautiful and they're they're far away they're distant <laughs> nobody no lion is bothering me so yeah let's preserve the lion polar bears let's preserve them yeah but the insects ew, they're creepy and i just want to make a case for insects i want to make a case for for you know nature in the very near world in our world the world that's close to home your own balcony your own house is stuffed with in, with insects you knew that um your mattress is stuffed with insects your garden um and i want to get into that because they are incredibly interesting I've been making my nature journal for a couple of weeks now. I've always been a nature fan ever since I was a child. I used to be that child lying flat on the belly studying ants. So that to me was really exciting. I didn't like playing cowboy and Indian or I didn't like most games that children played. You know, all you had to give me was a couple of bugs and a magnifying glass or a magnifying glass and a little piece of wood in summer would also be really great to see fire happening. Um, plants um i i, I would lo i love lying in the grass or rolling down from a hill um i just loved it i've always loved animals and not just you know casual animals like dogs and cats or but i i like bats and i don't like snakes snakes are not really my thing um one time this is kind of funny not many people know this but when I was a student, I moved from Nijmegen University to Leiden University. And at the time, it was really hard to get a room. And um, one day, you know, things happened. I told my parents, I want to move to another university. And they were like, why? Well, I had my reasons for it. They're like, oh boy, it's going to be tough finding a new room. But, you know, sometimes things in life just are meant to be, I think, because within three days, I had a room in the center of town it was a gorgeous room i'm telling you i don't i don't know if i have photos of it anymore and if i have i don't know where um but i can tell you this there was one string attached <laughs> a really scary <laughs> string <laughs> i came into that room and it was um uh, how do you say that um there was a tenant in there and she was going away for half a year and I could move into the house for half a year and then I would have to find my own place in that time. And, um, well, uh, when I came there, it was a really nice girl, but she had agreed to take care of a, a tarantula for a friend. So, can you already guess what's going to happen? She said to me, you can live here for six months if you take care of this tarantula i am not really scared of spiders i mean i catch them in a jar and i put them out take them outside i don't kill them sometimes a cat or my dog beats me to it and then they they chew them but um in general, I'm not really scared of spiders, but a tarantula, how the hell do you take care of a tarantula? This was in 1995, so this was like in the beginning of the internet, so there was not much information for me to be found. So I went, so I, there was a spider, right? And I know, I remember I moved in and I sat, I didn't have a TV at the time and I loved it not having a TV. So I sat at my table and there was this bookshelf with a spider on it in it. It was really in hindsight. I'm so sorry for the spider. I don't know how long he lived, but it was a very small, narrow plastic container and the animal didn't move. So I was like, big, big, bad. Are you still alive? It just didn't move. Spiders are goddamn boring. I'm telling you tarantulas are boring. They don't do anything. So, um, I, I just, I try to observe the animal and, and connect to it, right? You know, like, I think every animal deserves a connection. <clears throat> they do, but like connect with the tarantula is like sort of, it's an alien from outer space. It's, there's nothing to connect to. It's way too different and fucking scary. I mean, it's, 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 it's a giant spider. It was one with the red knees, so kind of big. And then the next day I decided, okay, Manny, well, go on. If you, do, if you want to do this correctly, 
you gotta know what to feed it because the next morning I, I was facing the problem of how am I gonna get this water and food because I don't want it to jump in my hand do they jump I didn't know shit about this guy about this animal all I knew is that they would hunt and eat mice and birds in, in you know in their natural habitat so I figured if it can jump on a mouse it can jump in my hand and I didn't want that to happen I knew the sting was only that of a bee so I thought I was gonna survive but I knew that once it had me I would be terrified so I went to this uh, this store for tropical animal exotic animals so I said well um, I am now living in a house and I have to take care of a tarantula for six months so he first wanted to establish what kind of tarantula it is it was easy because it had the red knee so that was easy so he said yeah well um, now he explained a little bit a thing or two and then he said well you gotta buy some food I said yeah okay give me some food I mean pallets or what no crickets Ew. okay so he gave me a box of crickets a big box like more like it was almost as big as the um, container for the spider and expensive too okay I said but he's uh, he, uh, so I said how do I kill him he said no you have to give him a life he has to hunt because he doesn't they don't eat um, dead animals they only eat live animals so then something began to dawn on me I said okay but how long do these crickets live well as long as you give them food and water oh so I actually don't have to take much care of the spider, but I have to take great care of these crickets. Uh-huh. Okay. And how do I do that? Well, it wasn't complicated in the sense of what to give them to eat. Because, you know, a little bit of lettuce and a little bit of well, foliage was good enough. No problem. And if you just wash the lettuce before giving it to them, you know, then, then it's wet enough. You don't have to give them an extra container of water. The trouble was with the crickets to open the lid, prevent them from jumping out while you wanted to toss something in. Well, that didn't work. So my first box of crickets toppled over and um, it took quite a bit of time um, for the crickets to still sing their song in my room. They were everywhere, literally. I don't know how many there were in, I think 20 or something, 20, 20 crickets maybe. And they were in my room somewhere. And um, I could never find them. And when I, I think I, when I came close, they just hopped away or something. I don't know. Uh, but that was my, uh, that was my first challenge. So the next day I went back and I said, I have a problem. And he started laughing. He said, your crickets are, have escaped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they have. And um, he just gave me um, a little box. He gave me actually, um, what I had done is I had taken some lettuce with me and he had these small plastic well mayonnaise boxes containers and he said um, I'll just put one cricket in, into each container and I put a little piece of, piece of lettuce in it he said that'll be enough for for a week or something for them so he gave me only three crickets he said that's all he will eat this week and then maybe you do it like this and um, so then I got home and I thought okay now I can feed my spider um, he also advised me to put some lettuce into the spider's container because the cricket would have to eat. So um, that's when um, I had to open the spider's container and then I noticed there were some droppings on the floor of the container and he said keep the spider really clean because if you don't um, it's, it's, it's not good. The spiders are a bit sensitive to um, dirty environment. So I thought, yeah, okay, good. I had these sort of wood chips that I could use for the spider. So then it was like, how the hell am I going to get out the spider? I said, how, that's why I asked him, how do I take it out without it biting me? He said, well, you can have gloves or um, use a device to pick it up or just grab, grab the body so that it can't bite you. I dared not pick it up. <laughs> So I took a soup scoop, <laughs> I scooped up the spider, <laughs> I actually took the container and I, I just sort of like toppled it over a little bit and then took the soup scoop and shoved the spider out into a cookie jar and quickly put the lid on. <laughs> 
So then I just cleaned the container, put the spider back in, and then I managed to get one cricket in and lettuce. That was enough for a half a year. So that was my mission accomplished. And, um, well, I tried to still connect with the spider and grow a bond, but it didn't happen. And fortunately, within three months, somebody came by to pick her spider back up. And... Um, it was a gorgeous, gorgeous animal. I just didn't understand it and I didn't appreciate it. And then this week I was in my garden and there is a garden wolf spider and I was looking at it and I thought, I know you, I've seen you before, but you look different. What's going on? It was as if she was holding a disc. So I was a bit amazed. I thought I had found something really, really special. And then I looked it up and it turned out it's a garden wolf spider and she actually has a cocoon of eggs on her hind, on, um, on the back side of her body that contains the eggs of the spiders. And when they, you know, hatch, she takes the spiders, the baby spiders, on top of her back. And um, that's where they grow. And I believe they eat her in the end. <laughs> anyway, animals are just so interesting. Insects, too, when you when you learn more about them. I mean, there are grasshoppers that have been an inspiration for engineers who uh, designed hydraulic systems. Um, you know, there are spiders are being researched for their webs for the material to make really good bulletproof um, fibers from. Um, all kinds of venoms, all kinds of colors um, cochineal lice, for example, they produce beautiful color. And, you know, I feel that um, there is not a much I can do to save the world. <laughs> I mean, I'm just on my own. <laughs> I can't do that. What I can do, however, is share what I have never done thus far, or not enough, I believe, is share my love for nature. And ever since I was a child, I have the capacity to see that small world close to home and to see the beauty in it and that is something I can share so that's why I have decided to keep a nature journal and it's incredibly inspiring for my artwork as well um, and I will you will see that in the next video that you know it, it really it, it it takes my energy and inspiration but it gives back way more and I hope that my endeavors, I mean, I'm learning. I'm not a good nature. I'm not a good diarist, nature diarist. I am. I still suck at drawing botanicals. I mean, I'm getting better, but I'm nowhere near professional. And I don't, I don't pretend to be, I, but I have a desire and I'm eager to learn. And I'm also very honest in showing you my process and in realizing that if something that I drew today is not perfect, it is part of the process. And it's good because what I would like my nature journal to do is to inspire more of you guys to keep a nature journal, to really start looking at your own world that's close by. We can all fly to exotic countries and admire nature there, but we have a really beautiful system of nature where we live. No matter where you live, there is so much more happening right under your nose if you're willing to look. And that's what I hope my nature journal will contribute to, along with all the other nature journals that I have discovered now and the great books that I've discovered. I'm going to share everything with you. And um, so that's what you can expect from me in the coming time, journaling, nature journaling and visual journaling. 